we look at the successive convex approximation approach which is related very related to the majorization minimization so successive convex approximation can be thought of as slightly more generalized version of majorization minimization and both approaches are very intuitive and have been used since some time though theoretical results for successive convex approximation are more recent under more general conditions they were restricted to more specific conditions earlier so the approach considers the problem minimize f of x subject to gi of x less than equal to zero so there is objective there's a constraints and both of them are non-convex both of them are non-convex functions but they are smooth smooth functions we have already seen the definition of smoothness so they are non-convex but they are smooth functions which means a quadratic upper bound still exists and the gradient does not change too abruptly uh, and they are differentiable uh, but they are non-convex and the approach is as follows so the approach is that we start at some x0 so we start at some x0 which is feasible which means that gi of x0 is less than equal to 0 for all i then we repeat this uh, for k equal to 1 2 onwards right so we repeat this uh, what we are doing is that we are solving zk equal to arg min of f tilde x comma xk so at k we have uh, so maybe i should start at x1 so at k we have f tilde of x comma xk which is an approximation to f to the original f so this is an approximation to the original f at xk and subject to gi of x comma xk j tilde of x comma xk less than equal to zero so f tilde and g tilde are convex approximations to f and g respectively so i'll talk in a minute i'll talk more about what kind of approximations these are but if you assume that these are convex approximations you can see that this problem zk equal to arg min uh, over x f of f tilde subject to gi tilde less than equal to zero can actually be solved let's say using interior point methods or cvx and so on so this problem can be solved and then you calculate xk plus one the next iterate as the convex combination of the earlier iterate and the uh, zk that you have calculated so lambda k is some tuning parameter that you have to tune uh, and you'll uh, tune it in a certain way but this is the overall algorithm so this is the successive convex approximation algorithm now let us uh, look at in detail what f tilde and g tilde are specifically it is required that f x comma x k uh, should be it should be uh, mu strongly convex right so it is not only a convex approximation it's a mu strongly convex approximation in so it should be mu strongly convex in x and additionally it is required that gradient of f at xk calculated f at xk gradient of f tilde calculated at xk is equal to the gradient of f calculated at xk right so this is the other condition so there are two conditions required for f and uh, the conditions for g are slightly more stricter which is that g tilde gi tilde of x comma xk uh, should also be mu strongly convex so that condition is same so that condition is same uh, additionally we have that g of x comma xk g tilde of x comma xk is less than equal to gi of x and in addition to this property the earlier property that the gradient matches that also should be true so xk comma xk should be equal to 
gradient of gi tilde at xk and then finally we also require that gi tilde of xk comma xk should be equal to gi of xk which means that the function value should match the gradient value should match at xk and overall g tilde should be a lower bound on gi of x right so these are the conditions for so these four are the conditions for g and these two are the conditions for 2 and uh, so un if these conditions are satisfied if these six conditions are satisfied then these are valid uh, convex approximations and then you can basically substitute them solve this convex approximation problem at each iteration and this series of uh, convex approximation problems will ultimately give you a, the this solution this uh, solution of this non-convex uh, optimization problem right uh, so these are really technical conditions and it may look like uh, how would you check these but these are not hard to satisfy actually it turns out that these are not very difficult to satisfy so there are scenarios where these occur naturally so let's look at some examples so let's look at one particular example which is that minimization of f1x minus f2x with respect to x is an unconstrained optimization problem there is no g here and we have that f1 f2 are convex right so this is a difference of convex functions so this is a difference of convex functions and how do we minimize the difference of convex functions uh, what we can do is we can leave the f1 part as it is because it is convex already and uh, for f2 we can construct the following approximation at xk we can construct the approximation note that uh, f2 is actually you should consider minus f2 so minus f2 we are constructing the approximation minus gradient of f2 at xk inner product with x plus mu by 2 x minus xk norm square right so because we are adding this term you can see that the hessian with respect to x will be mu times identity right so this will take care of the strong convexity requirement and the second thing is the gradient should match so that is taken care of by this term so if you calculate the gradient at xk you will see that the gradient of minus f2 x comma xk at x equal to xk is simply gradient of f2 at xk which is also the gradient of the uh, of which is the required required condition right the gradient of f2 at xk minus gradient of f2 at xk so here we see that generally minus f2 where f2 is convex or in other words concave functions naturally satisfy this requirement and therefore you can have any difference of convex objective function which where you can apply successive convex approximation so in other words here let me just reiterate you would have to solve this problem at every iteration you would have to solve zk equal to r min over x f1 x which is convex minus gradient f2 x k comma x plus mu by 2 norm of x k minus x norm square Right, so as you can see the objective function now is indeed convex in x because it contains f1x and then it contains a quadratic term in x which is also convex and then xk plus 1 again is the convex combination of xk plus lambda k zk right so convex combination of xk and uh, zk right so this is the algorithm the successive convex approximation algorithm applied to difference of convex functions right so i hope uh, this is clear and a similar thing would actually hold if there are constraints in the same way you can construct uh, approximations if there are constraints here which are difference of convex right or in other words concave less than equal to zero constraints let's look at another example where successive convex approximation can be applied so that example is minimization with respect to x comma y 
f of x comma y where f is block convex so it's block convex in x given y and it's convex in y given x right the block convexity we have already seen block convexity in the context of alternating minimization and in fact SCA is also applicable to this case so in this case what we can do is that let's say given xk yk we can solve so let me call it uk vk right is equal to argmin of right so it's equal to argmin of f x comma uh, argmin is with respect to x and y so x comma y k plus f of x k comma y right note that f is convex given y so f of x comma y k is actually convex f of x k comma y is actually convex plus let's say mu by 2 x minus x k norm square plus mu by 2 y minus y k norm square so these two terms take care of the strong convexity requirement and the first two terms take care of the gradient requirement so you can verify here that the gradient also matches at x k comma y k and then you can update x k plus one as convex combination again convex combination of uh, x k and u k which we obtained in the previous step likewise y k plus one is convex combination of uh, y k and uh, v k which is obtained in the previous term so this is another yet another example where sca is applicable note that here sca is applicable and also alternating minimization is applicable so both are actually competing methods in this case both have uh, they may or may not one of them could be better one of them could be worse depends on the problem really so this is another example and uh, i'll give yet another example of uh, where sca can be applied so let's take the case where gi we already said that gi is actually smooth so the smoothness requirements already satisfied by default and then i can claim that g tilde of x comma xk for any smooth g can be expressed can be constructed as g of xk plus gradient of g sorry i should say gi gi of xk comma x minus xk plus l by 2 norm square of x minus xk right so g was non-convex but now what i did was i am saying that this right hand side is a convex approximation of the original non-convex g and because g is smooth from the quadratic upper bound it follows that this is less than equal to gx so the upper bound condition follows from the quadratic upper bound right so this will allow us to satisfy one of the conditions and the gradient will also match so all the conditions required for g i are actually true in this case you can verify that so in whenever we have such a problem we can solve minimize f tilde of x comma xk constructed in the same way and g i tilde of x comma xk constructed in the same way so this is basically any anywhere you have smooth functions you can use this approximation and this approximation can be used for g and f both right so we have already seen it for g and can also be used for f in the same way right so this is yet another example where successive convex approximation is being used so just to recap it's a very simple approach you replace the non-convex functions f and g with their convex approximations and there are two three ways of constructing such convex approximations the simplest of them is the last one you just use this quadratic function as the convex approximation so you will get actually a qcqp as an approximation solve that qcqp and then keep on doing those iterations so that is the general stochastic uh, the successive convex approximation algorithm